worship. Romans 12, 1. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Let us examine our ways and test them. And let us return to the Lord. Lamentations 340. We admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5.16. We were entirely ready to have our God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourselves before the Lord. He will lift you up. James 4.10. We humbly ask him to remove all our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, nine. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Luke 6.31 we made a direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remind that the brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5. 23 and 24. We continued to take a personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God praying only for knowledge of his will for us and power to carry that out. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 Having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all our affairs. Brothers, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself, or you too may have sinned. Galatians 6 1. Thank you, everybody. Party on. Okay, let's do this again. Hi, my name is Veronica, and I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, thank you. I do have a couple announcements tonight, okay? Um, the first one I have is for um, the grief support group, okay? And this is Faith Community, still laughing at me. Faith Community Fellowship Church, and it begins February 7th. I will have the real flyer on Sunday at church. If anybody is interested, I have um, a number and a website that you can get from me tonight, okay? And it is, it's limited seating, and it only runs for a short period of time, but all are welcome, okay? And it is faith-based. And then the other thing that I have here is Family Resource Night, and it begins February 2nd, and it is at Revolution Church. It is not a church event. The, their use, Youth Services Alliances is using the church facility. And you have to register online, and there is also a free meal. Okay? It is every, it's uh, six consecutive Tuesdays, all through February and two through March. And I do have flyers, and I do have registration for that. And then the other thing that I have, I don't know what to do with this. Okay? If, um, we 
have two baptisms coming up. So if you're interested in getting baptized, then see Pastor Aaron, Pastor Mike, Pastor Barry, or Pastor Steve. We do not have a date set, but it is coming up soon. And I can't read my writing there. Oh, we have step study on Friday nights with Ann. Ann, can you wave your hand? Okay, next Friday night will be the last um, new member coming in until we start a new session because they're on. They'll be doing step three, okay. And next week we have a meal. Okay, we'll have a full meal um, and no resources. And then also, if you do not have a home church, then we invite you to come here every Sunday at nine thirty or at eleven, or you can do nine thirty and eleven. And so um, we are studying the Book of Revelation. And it's, it's quite a different take on it, and it's, um, it's something that you don't want to miss. It's very powerful. So with that, I'm done. Is there any guys in here? Listen, <laughs> she just hands me the mic. Thanks. Can anybody raise their hand, men, that would be willing to come to the step study group? If I, if I start one back up, yeah, on Friday probably, but right before Celebrate. Anybody in here interested? Raise your hands. Don't be shy. Good. Um, we can work on the time. I'm thinking maybe like 4.30 right before Celebrate, but I can change the day. I'm just, I just want to get some people interested because I was coming up here every Thursday and nobody was here. So, so I just pray for an hour. Yeah, get with me. Thank you. Any other announcements? Did we miss anything? Okay. All right. So we have a video testimony from Steve N. And we have a few people working on live testimonies. If you want to give your testimony live, then see Pastor Mike or Pastor Aaron, Pastor Barry, and they will give you kind of the outline format for that. Okay? So that's it. Hello, my forever family. My name is Steve Nash. I'm a believer in recovery from addiction to drugs and alcohol. I have a sponsor who has a sponsor who has a sponsor. They all support me in my recovery. Thank you. Short prayer, please. Father God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for this time. Thank you for always being with me with unconditional love. Thank you for those that are here in support. Thank you for those that have helped me through this journey. In your hands, Father. I ask that you allow me to take the business of this day and set it to the side and absorb what it is you'd have me to take in while we're here. And I ask that you open the hearts and the minds of others to hear what it is that you would have. In this name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I was born July 28, 1971, in a suburb of Dallas, Texas. The young lady who gave birth to me put me up for adoption. I was adopted five days later by Linda and Hollis Nash. I know nothing of my birth parents, and as far as I'm concerned, I have the best parents anyone could ever hope for. My parents have been married over 50 years. I have a younger brother. We were both adopted from different families. My parents have offered everything they could to give me a good life, support, opportunity, and unconditional love. My father's work had us move several times throughout my childhood. I've lived in Texas, Georgia, Mississippi, Illinois, Virginia, and Florida. I was in the Boy Scouts where I did make Eagle Scout. I was raised in a Methodist church and I was involved in youth group within the church. That's just what we did growing up until about the 10th grade. Then I had a choice. I chose to slow down and not focus on church so much and focus on other things. Before recovery, my grandfather was a judge. Most times I saw him, he had a whiskey and a cigarette and I'd see him at the kitchen sink with a small glass of whiskey, two ice cubes and he would add just a touch of water and he would swirl it around take a sip, and he'd look out the window at the world like he was at the most peace, and he had all the answers. I loved my grandfather. He was my hero of mine. I wanted to be like him. Whenever my family was together, there was always whiskey, wine, beer, so I did not see anything wrong with drinking. I never saw the drunkenness, the fights, or anything that made me think any other than what I can. When I, when, I just knew that when I grew up, I wanted to do the same thing. It looked like a great thing to do at the time. 
I tried alcohol a little earlier. I vividly remember my first drink, my first real drink, I should say. I was 14. I knew someone my age who was hanging out with an older guy named Johnny. When I first hung out at Johnny's place, he had porno on, and he had plenty of wine and cigarettes at hand. I started smoking, drinking wine, and watching porno. I drank so much wine that I actually got sick, but I was determined to get better at this. It was a great feeling up to the point of getting sick. I just needed a little more practice. A little time later, I went back to Johnny's place shortly after starting where I had left off the last time. Johnny told me there was a price for the party this time. He wanted to see me naked. Didn't seem exactly right, but there was porno and wine. I wasn't Sure, but then he offered me 40 bucks to do so, so I agreed and got the money. In my mind, it wasn't a bad deal. This went on for some time and only ended when Johnny shot and killed a co-worker. Off to prison he went. I never saw him again. Well, from then on, I was off to the races. Whenever I got the chance to drink, I would. I enjoyed everything about it. It made me cool, hip, good-looking. About this time, I got the word that we were moving to the Chicago area. Being down south all my life, it was quite a change. It snows, and they go to school in the snow. Uh, they talk funny. They see things like pop instead of soda. And <laughs> so this started some not quite fitting in issues. I wanted to be popular, so I just joined the swim team. I was a good swimmer. I made varsity. I made letterman's jacket. thought I was doing good. I remember specifically that I wanted to try marijuana, so I did this. It was a great combo with my drinking. This is 1988 we're talking about. Guns and Roses, Metallica, Marlboro Reds, girls, drugs, and alcohol. Just having fun. I wanted this for the rest of my life. My relationship with God at the time, to tell you the truth, there really wasn't one. I had all I needed, I thought. 1989, my senior year, time to move again. Back, moved to Virginia Beach, Virginia. I didn't want to do it. I was in my last semester of my senior year, and I had a job, a girl, and, and, and time to hook up with things that I wanted there. I wasn't too sure about where we were going. My parents said that if I went to Virginia Beach, they would get me a new car. So I figured I would try it out. I got the car and found a lot more drugs in Virginia Beach, LSD, shrooms, plenty of pot, and just about anything anybody could get hold of alcohol. A lot of Navy guys liked LSD, Uh, because it did not show up in their drug tests, and this is when I went from just a user to a dealer as well. In 1990, just graduated high school, I met a girl down at the beach that wanted to catch up with me. One night that summer, she and I found ourselves in a room full of people all trying something new. They were smoking off a can. I wanted to try something new. Hello, crack. Wow, what a rush. That's how cocaine was added to the list of things I was already doing. Now I could drink and party all night. By 1992, I was spending hundreds of dollars a week on drugs. I was hooked, going places and just staying there all night, two and three nights at a time. Got awful expensive, and it got way out of hand quickly. I had to do something to get away. I was lost, not sure where to go. At this time, I had forgotten all about God. I decided to join the Navy delayed entry program. I partied up until the day I left for boot camp. All of a sudden, I was bald, getting yelled at, not much sleep, and had to learn things. And worst of all, I sobered up. What have I gotten myself into? About three weeks in, I was called out by my company commander. He told me that I'd tested positive for cocaine. Said I could fight it and that I could take up to six months or they could send me home. This was not a hard choice. Especially at the time, send me back to Virginia Beach. Well, when I got back, I got up with the girl again at the beach, and we picked up where we had left off. I was not in love, but I'd asked this girl to marry me. We had been catching up now for a couple of years. It seemed like the thing to do at the time. I thought this would get my life in order. My addictions continued. I sold wholesale sporting goods. My nearest boss was 300 miles away, and I was paid weekly. I could deal drugs, run and gun, all I wanted now. I lost that job because I went to go see a customer under the influence. I was found out. So what did I do? Get another job. This time, 1998, the car business. I was given a new car to drive. Got a new one every 5,000 miles. Gas and insurance was covered. 
A lot of tenants kept it clean. What a deal. The only thing was long hours, day after day, and I was selling a lot of cars, and I could, you know, help, of course, with my friend of cocaine. I could go, go, and go. I thought this was all good. February 10th, 2000, I had a baby girl, beautiful baby girl, delivered into this world, healthy and strong. There it was, my first blood relative in my life. I was happy and loved her more than words can express. But this time, my drug and alcohol use was way out of control. Staying out all night, smoking crack, snorting coke, all day at work, drinking like a fish, and in between, or, or maybe all at the same time, I was, what am I doing? This is no way for a husband or a father to act. You know what I need? Another job. You know, because drugs are out of hand in the car business. I went on doing an, another job, but I was having this problem. Drugs and alcohol were everywhere I went. By 2004, I was making more money and drinking and using more than ever before. I started attending church again because something made me think that I should have my daughter in church because that's what my parents did for me. Attending church turned on the light in my life to see that things were way out of control. By this time, my addictions had expanded into opiates as well. I thought I looked really good on the outside, but I was a wreck on the inside. I got to know God again and his love for me. Philippians 1.6. I am sure that God, who began good work within you, will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until the task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus Christ returns. This knowing of God's love made the way. I was living harder to stomach. I wondered and I cried, how do I stop? My life is out of control. Everything is a mess. On an altar call, I got on my knees and I prayed, please, God, help me. I cannot do this myself. Just as clear as I'm talking to you, he said to me, don't drink. With all the things I had going on, God tells me not to drink. Does he not see what's going on in my life? I'm a terrible husband, a verbal abuser, a lost drug addict, a cheater. Long story short, my life is completely unmanageable. I didn't listen, and things got worse. A couple of weeks later, same thing, altar call, back on my knees, God help. He said again, don't drink. This time I told him that he would have to take the taste out of my mouth. Guess what? He did. I went almost a year not drinking. Life was good again. I grew in church, and I got closer to God than ever. So what did I do on my birthday? One reason I would be okay to have a beer or two. Quickly, I was back off where I left off, drinking and drug, and here I go again, another 13-year roller coaster ride. Things got worse and worse. The only good thing that happened during this time was the birth of my son, Stephen Nash II, on April 28, 2010. This was a selfish act, trying to grow in my relationship with the woman I was married to, but still not in love with. By December 2014, I was in a methadone clinic to get off pills and heroin. Jobless, alcoholic, and broken. There was nothing left in a relationship with my wife. She started a relationship with a friend of mine, and I did not care. Wife decided to separate after 20 years of a crazy relationship. January 2015, I came to Florida to live with my parents. I tried to get a grip on things. I transferred methadone clinics so I wouldn't get sick, but this did not stop me from drinking and then back into cocaine. This time, I was losing more than things. Now joy was gone. My addictions got more out of hand than ever before. I just wanted to die. This world would be a better place without me. I was working at a hotel on the eighth floor. I looked down wondering if it was high enough to kill myself. I was scared that it wouldn't. You know, there's things in life worse than death. It is, you know, was coming to an end. I was finally arrested and sent to jail for decisions I had made to support my addictions looking at possibly 15 years in jail. Now what? I give up. 30 years of running and gunning, I'm done. All bridges burned and all apologies used up. Matthew 6, 34. So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. Before my arrest, I had started attending church at Cape Coral First United Methodist Church with my parents. I'd fall asleep during service as I was on 200 milligrams of methadone every morning. 
I started to wean down on methadone, one milligram every other day. In 400 days, I was off methadone. But I was still... <laughs> but I was still drinking and using cocaine and pot. Cocaine was way out of hand. Uh, with joy gone and missing my children so much, I couldn't stand it anymore. The last bit of my addiction was really just a blur. When I got out of jail, December 2016, I attended Celebrate Recovery over at First United Methodist Church on a Monday night. I don't know where to begin. I went to one-on-one with a man named Ken. Uh, I was the only one in there that night in one-on-one. Ken totally understood what I was going through. I've been to CR at First United every week since that night. My sobriety date is January 23rd, 2017. By the grace of God and the powerhouse support team, I have victory over drugs and alcohol. My life has become happy, joyous, and free. Matthew 4, 6 to 8, God gives strength to the humble. So give yourself humbly to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And when you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. I stopped running from God. I turned around and took one step to him, and he came running to me. My relationship with Christ is better than ever before. My chains have been broken. And my legal issues were resolved because of working this program and doing the next right thing. Other than CR, I'm involved in Alcoholics Anonymous and church. I'm involved in service work in both. I've been through the 12 steps, and I've participated in the step study and celebrate recovery. I'm blessed and privileged to be a facilitator in the step study going on right now. All the steps are important to me. Admit to God, to ourselves, and other human beings the exact nature of our wrongs. The fourth and the fifth step were the really the beginning to see that I had grown within my recovery. I was nervous about completing the fourth and the fifth step because of fear. I found these steps helping to give me freedom from fear and allow me to begin work on cleaning up my little piece of the universe. Step eight and nine, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make an amends to them all and make direct amends to such people never possible except when to do so would injure them or others. This is where the promises of the program started happening more rapidly. I've been able to make an amends to my family and others in my past that I've caused such grief and harm. I have found those individuals forgave me and put a blessing on my growth and recovery. Doing the ninth step has given me a new freedom and a new happiness. I comprehend the word serenity, and I have peace in my life. The feeling of uselessness and self-pity has disappeared. My outlook and attitude upon life has changed. I know how to handle situations that used to baffle me. I can see where my past experience can help others. God is doing for me what I could not do for myself. Step 12, having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all our affairs. This is serious stuff. Just in the beginning of my recovery, 10 people I know now have gone back out and couldn't come back because they died. I'm here because I want to live. I knew how to die before I got here. I have the opportunity to work with others in recovery. I have been on two different men's spiritual retreats and the CR Summit in Tennessee recently. I love service work, greeting people as they come in, making coffee, chairing, sharing, whatever I can do. I have to give it to keep it. I thank God every day for my mixed up life. Without it, I would not be where I am today. I have friends now, not just acquaintances. I have rekindled relationships with my family and my children again. Hope and joy are back in my life again. God has brought a new relationship in my wife. I met a beautiful woman who I married and I love with all my heart. I love you, Amanda. She worships Christ with me. You know, she worships Christ with me and she supports me in every way. Being honest, faithful in Christ is the foundation of our relationship. Christ's care and love is with us all the time. God and this program have given me a life that is getting better every day. I walk tall among men. They know me not, for I've been born anew. 
God has put in my hands the charts that take me through the troubled waters to the shores, which only yesterday seemed but a dream. I would not trade this for anything. But I have to work the program, and I have a long way to go. Anybody new, get a sponsor. Build a powerhouse support team and work the steps. Don't be in fear of any of the step process and get involved in service work. Please, God, don't stop before you see the miracle. It works when you live it. I love you guys, and God loves you more. Thank you for letting me share my experience. Great. Right. Woo! Great job. Awesome. Reading on Pastor Mike, grateful to be with Jesus Christ. Powerful testimony. You know, you can't give up. When you start down the road to recovery, it's not going to be an easy road. There's going to be bumps along the way. Amen? We've all faced those bumps. We've all faced hurdles. And so the main thing is, is to know that you have a forever family right here, and all you have to do is reach out. You reach out, and we will help you up. Okay, that's what we're here for. We're help. We're here to help you up. If you need prayed over, we can pray for you. Whatever you need, your forever family's here for you. Just, just know that. Okay, so just know that. So tonight, let's uh, let's stand and we'll close with our serenity prayer and then our final song. Please pray with me. Father God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's close with a final song.